What's going on guys? This is your motivation guy Keith Allen and today we're going to be making a video for all of our friends playing on the sticks. Okay, so if you feel like you're struggling to win fights, guys, don't worry. We got you covered with a ton of tips and tricks to start winning your fights on controller. I'm super pumped up for this video. So without further ado, you guys ready for this? Let's get this going. But first, let's talk about some key differences between these inputs that are important to understand to really come out ahead on either side. The key to being successful on either controller or MNK is really to identify the strengths and weaknesses of your input and play to your strengths. You're never going to know in a game if your enemy is on mouse and keyboard or on a controller engaging a fight with them. So rather than of just obsessing over the strengths of their input, it's just much better to really turn the focus inward towards your own game. However, you know, it's also important to know where the strengths of each input lie so that you can be prepared for any type of play that an enemy may try to make in your games. This is an oversimplification for sure, but the general gist of Apex in particular, you know, advanced movement is a bit easier on mouse and keyboard. And so while aiming can be a bit easier on controller, obviously this isn't the case for every player, but the input setup of MNK just lends itself much better to fast inputs than a controller does. So keep in mind that, you know, there are pros that play on both inputs, so you can reach the highest level of play regardless of what you use. What these pros all have in common is they recognize the strength of their input and play the game in a way that helps them use those strengths as much as possible. With that out of the way, all right, let's take a closer look at the strength of playing on a controller. The key difference between controller and MNK is the existence of aim assist on controllers. So due to a mouse being just much more precise than joysticks, this feature has become a mainstay in shooters and this is no different for Apex. It's important to understand guys how aim assist and Apex really works and how best to make it work for you. Aim assist shines in close range gunfights. While you may not be able to 180 as fast as a player using a mouse, aim assist really does help you hit close range shots helping you really make up for the lack of precision movement in a joystick. The steady movement of a joystick, you know, combined with this aim assist, allows for effective close range tracking. And once you get it down, man, like you're gonna be lethal in close range fights. This goes for hip fire as well as when aiming down sights. It's important to really note that aim assist depends very heavily on how big of a target the enemy is when you're aiming at them. If an enemy is really far away and you try to hit shots with the one X, aim assist will be very weak or even non-existent in these fights. However, if you do have a more magnified sight, like one that allows you to clearly see the enemy you're shooting at, regardless of the range, then aim assist will kick in much more heavily. Understanding this and ensuring that you have the proper sight to take long range fights will greatly increase your accuracy. Aim assist is incredibly powerful if you know how to use it to your advantage. And we're gonna definitely talk about it a bit more on some specific situations shortly. But first, let's touch on some of the weaknesses of playing on controllers that you should always be taking into account. All right, guys, so before we move on to the weaknesses of playing on a controller, does your game have any weaknesses? Be honest. I know mine does, and the coaches over at ProGuys.com have it all covered, and they have the knowledge and experience to help you round your game up. So whether it's getting better on a controller or even learning better rotations, you got to check out the link in the description if you're ready to level up your game. All right, guys, so moving on, let's talk about the drawbacks of playing on a controller. First of all, what we are about to discuss is weaknesses are simply aspects of the game that controller finds harder than mouse and keyboard. You know, controllers can do nearly every mechanic in the game that MK can do, and it really just tends to be a bit tougher to pull off in some specific instances. You know, the biggest example of this is advanced movement. You know, while you can still bunny hop, wall bounce, and all the other advanced movements in Apex, it is definitely more difficult to do well while also performing all the actions in the game. So let's take a B-hop healing as an example. This is just much easier to do on a mouse and keyboard than it is on a traditional controller. The main reasoning for this is the raw number of inputs required. So if you're using a default controller, you're gonna be playing claw or going pretty hard to pull this trick off, especially if you wanna keep it going for the duration of a battery. Even if you have an advanced controller with paddles or buttons on the back, your raw range of motion and input speed is still gonna be lower than an MK. Don't get me wrong, guys, you know, there are a ton of top level players that have no problem, you know, pulling off this mechanic and many more complicated ones out there. It's definitely not impossible to be a movement guru on controller. It's just the end result is definitely gonna be not as dynamic as your MK counterparts. And so understanding this and accounting for the bit more creativity that MK players may have with their movement is really key to adapting your game to your input. All right, so another big aspect that you need to take into account is looting and healing. Controllers just have less inputs, and due to this, they have a bit of a slower time of healing and grabbing loot and organizing their bags. 
Healing will generally be a bit slower as selecting a heal and pulling it out will often require you to slow down a bit or sacrifice other inputs. This is mostly noticeable when trying to mix in movement with your heals like we discussed. And so controllers are also a bit slower at looting, using their joysticks to target loot on the ground, and having to use the cursor to organize loot while in a death box. Add to this being unable to strafe while in a death box the way MK does, and they definitely have a disadvantage when it comes to looting an apex. All right, so before we take a deep dive into some best practices and tips for winning fights on the controller, you got to make sure that your settings are dialed in, all right? You know, while this isn't our focus in this video, having the proper controller settings will unlock your potential on the input. And if you're just playing on default or having trouble fine tuning them to your liking, make sure to check out our controller AOC settings for season 10. That video takes a deep dive into everything sensitivity related to help you guys dial in your shots. Anyways, let's get into some fighting. The strengths and weaknesses that we just touched on are important to really be aware of so that you can do your best to shore up your weaknesses and you know emphasize your strengths. It cannot be understated how strong aim assist really is. You know, it may seem like we mentioned a lot of negatives to playing on a controller, but it's just important that we all understand the nuances of our input. So let's just take some time to really dive into a couple of the best practices for close, medium, and long range fights and talk about a couple of nuances with particular weapons. At close range, you can pump damage if you have a good shot. You know, this is where you're most lethal at, you know, downing somebody, but also where you're most vulnerable. So due to advanced movement coming a bit tougher to controller players, you need to put a big emphasis on positioning. This is the case for every Apex player, but with your input in mind, you should be even more focused on it. Don't think of your less snappy movement as weaknesses, but rather think of your stellar shot on the sticks combined with aim assist as a strength. It's not like you can't do crazy movements to get out of trouble, it's that you want to avoid having to. Good controller players try to get good positioning and score off in even gunfights with other players. So if you can manage to have good clean 1v1s and you're well practiced on hitting your shots, you're going to find just much more success than trying to fight two or three guys in one building. The bottom line is that target selection is just slower in a joystick and your strength is not rapidly changing targets in a hectic fight. You definitely will perform much better if you put yourself in situations where you can afford to focus on dealing damage to one enemy at a time. And on top of this guys, certain close range weapons like the shotties or the prowler are super strong on controllers. With aim assist, hip firing and close range ADS is really accurate, making most shotties and subs deadly in your hands if you're at close ranges. Not to mention, most people just prefer burst weapons on controllers over MNK, where the lack of precision on the joysticks actually helps you hit more bullets in your burst. At medium ranges, the principles we've discussed so far hold true, except at these ranges, you're much less vulnerable to getting duped by enemy movement. Whenever you are at ranges where you aren't immediate danger or being pushed, you can focus even more on good positioning and laying down a lot of shots. Remember guys, don't be afraid to bump the magnification of your sight up to a 2x or a 3x, as it definitely is going to help a ton with aim assist actually kicking in. And so while you can make a 1x work at a lot of medium ranges, you're definitely sacrificing accuracy if the enemy is too far away. And same for long range fights. At these ranges, you have ultimate freedom to maneuver without worry of the enemy pushing you. So make sure that if you are using a sniper or any other weapon of your choice at these ranges, that you find yourself a good long range scope. At these ranges, it can be really tough to hit shots with a controller without having the proper sight. So if you've ever tried to hit long range shots with a longbow or a scout with a 1x sight, you know exactly what I'm talking about. I know you have great tracking and are a great shot. Just do yourself a favor and fit the scope to the fight. The bottom line, guys, is controller players' creativity in games is hurt by their lack of movement prowess. However, if you learn to play around the weaknesses and embrace the strengths, you can be just as good as any other player on any input. While you may not be as quick in-game, you can adjust your playstyle to account for these facts and still come out on top. After all, aim is this OP, right? While the war between controller and MAK will wage on well past this video, it's important not to let the arguments between the differences bother you and focus on becoming the best player that you can be. With top level players using both inputs, there's just no excuse for anyone to blame their controls. Once again, this is Keith Allen, your motivation guy. Let us know in the comments which of these tips today that you found most useful. And if you're a controller grinder, hit us up with a tip of your own. Hey, if you guys liked the video, make sure to sub to the channel and connect with me on my Instagram at your motivation guy. Listen, we believe in you. Never stop, never quit. Keep your faith up in your abilities and what you can do. Practice definitely makes perfect. And so if you ever find yourself being discouraged, just keep thinking about where you want to be in your life, not only in this game, but obviously also in life. And so keep going and we'll see you on the next one. Peace. <laughs>